In a courtroom in Western Sicily, a young woman takes to the stand. A victim of sexual abuse, she's defied tradition and refused to marry her attacker. Now she's fighting a law that has allowed generations of men to escape justice for their crimes. But will her determination be enough to change centuries of tradition? Back in the 1960s, the seeds of the women's liberation movement were being planted across the Western world. In the United States, the release of the birth control pill was ushering in a new era of sexual independence, while President Kennedy's Commission on the Status of Women sought to establish equal rights. Across the Atlantic in the United Kingdom, the mood was much the same. As women saw their right to abort a pregnancy become enshrined in law, female workers began fighting for equal pay. Even in Russia, women were blazing trails as Valentina Tereshkova became the first woman to travel to space. But over on the Italian island of Sicily, things were not looking quite so bright for women. Although most of the country had seen a rise in equality since the end of World War II, Sicily, in common with much of Italy south, was often perceived as being somewhat behind the times. And while industrial development in the north brought opportunities for women, many in the country's poorer regions still struggled against degradation and abuse. One such area was the town of El Camo, located close to Palermo on the shores of the Tyrrhenian Sea. It was there on January 9, 1948, that a girl named Franca Viola was born. The daughter of Vita Ferra and her husband Bernardo Viola, who worked as a farmer, Franca soon grew into a beautiful young woman. In 1963, Franca began a relationship with Filippo Melodia, the 23-year-old nephew of a local mafia figure. But even though the pair became engaged, Bernardo ordered his daughter to end things after Filippo got in trouble with the law. Afterwards, he disappeared to Germany and Franca fell in love with another man. By 1965, Franca and her new boyfriend were making plans to marry. However, Filippo then came back to Sicily and he wasn't happy about Franca's new relationship. He began stalking his ex-girlfriend, in fact, making threats against those close to her and attempting to rekindle their romance. Then things took a violent turn. On December 26, 1965, Filippo and a group of 15 companions broke into Viola's house while Bernardo was away. Shockingly, they attacked Vita and kidnapped 18-year-old Franca. And when her 8-year-old brother, Mariano, tried to hold on to her, they whisked him away as well. Within a few hours, the kidnappers had freed Mariano. However, Franca was kept captive for eight terrifying days, during which she was subjected to a horrific ordeal. While being held at the home of Filippo's sister shared with her husband, Franca was raped by her ex-fiancé on a number of occasions. For Filippo, the attack wasn't merely a way to cause suffering to the woman who had refused his advances. At the time, Sicilian tradition saw rape victims as dishonored women, and it was common practice for them to marry their attackers. So, by assaulting Franca, Filippo probably believed that he was also coercing her into becoming his wife. Even more shockingly, the practice of marrying women off to the men who had raped them was not limited to rural Sicily at the time. In fact, it was even back to an extent by Italian law, which viewed rape as an offense against public morality instead of a personal attack. Furthermore, the idea of a rehabilitating marriage between victim and attacker was also supported by the state. In fact, rapists were automatically absolved of their crime once a union with the victim had taken place. While his daughter was being held against her will, Bernardo was working alongside the local police to free her. And when Franca was finally released, officers were able to apprehend her kidnappers. At this point, though, a marriage would have allowed Filippo to escape prosecution. However, Franca defied tradition and refused to wed a man who had raped her. Instead, Franca decided to take Filippo to court and make him pay for his crimes. But in a society where rehabilitating marriages were the norm, it was a controversial decision. Not only had Franca chosen to remain a woman without honor, but she was also attempting to turn the patriarchal structure of Sicilian society on its head. From the beginning, Franca's struggle was a difficult one. After she refused to marry Filippo, her family's cottage and vineyard were destroyed in an arson attack. Then in late 1966, the trial began. Held in Trapani on Sicily's western coast, the hearing soon became a media sensation. And as the nation watched, it became clear that public opinion was on Franca's side. During the trial, Filippo's defense rested on the idea that he and Franca had been genuinely in love and that they had agreed to run away together. This argument did not prove persuasive, however, and Filippo ultimately lost the legal battle. Sentenced to 11 years behind bars, he eventually managed to reduce his term to 10. But even though Franca was praised for her bravery and standing up to the unjust tradition, 
many believed that no man would want to marry her after her ordeal. However, in December 1968, her critics were proven wrong when she tied the knot with accountant Giuseppe Ricci. A friend of Franca's since childhood, Giuseppe found himself on the receiving end of threats but ignored them in order to marry the woman he loved. Happily, there was plenty of positivity surrounding the wedding as well. Giuseppe Saragat, the Italian president, gave the couple a wedding gift of $40, while the transport minister treated them to a month's free travel on the railways. And after a low-key ceremony held at dawn to avoid the crowds, Franca and her new husband retreated into a life of relative obscurity. Today, Franca and Giuseppe still live in Alcamo with their family. Filippo, meanwhile, fared less well. Although he was freed in 1976, he found himself permanently expelled from Sicily thanks to his mafia connections. Eventually, ending up in Moderna in northern Italy, he was shot to death in 1978. Moreover, Franca's act of bravery had a lasting impact on Italian society. Eventually, in 1981, the law that allowed rapists to avoid punishment by marrying their victims was abolished. However, it wasn't until 1996 that the courts stopped considering sexual assault to be an offense against morality and began viewing it as a crime against an individual. Over the years, Franca's story has been depicted by directors and authors keen to capture the way in which this remarkable woman challenged generations of tradition. As well as a movie, Most Beautiful Wife, she's also inspired a book by Sicilian writer Beatrice Monroy. And in 2017, the short movie Viola Franca made it to the finals of the Manhattan Short Film Festival, proof that her struggle remains relevant to this very day. Thank you.